Ruby Lane, what a great platform. In today's conversation, I want to explain to you how to sell on Ruby Lane like a pro. Don't go anywhere. You're going to love today's conversation. I guarantee it. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Soda Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you're all doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ought to ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. <laughs> In today's uh, tutorial, I want to show you how to sell on Ruby Lane like a pro. And uh, here is the skeleton of the conversation. So, overview. The steps you need to follow, join, manage your shop, optimize for Google Shopping, price properly, promote your shop, handle orders, provide excellent service, and then we'll do a recap. In the overview, I just want to tell you that Ruby Lane is a sales site specializing in antiques, collectibles, dolls, fine art, furniture, lighting, glass, jewelry, porcelain, pottery, and vintage fashion, among others. And the way it works is very simple. So shoppers can simply go to their website and begin browsing through their inventory either by specific shop or by item category okay and uh, shop owners who are interested in selling their items through ruby lane must go through a very detailed process which i'll explain to you in this show where their marketplaces team will pre-screen so ruby lane's marketplaces team will pre-screen items sold through your shop to make sure you meet quality and professionalism standards and Ruby Lane has a lot of things that uh, attract viewers from all over the world. So they have a, a very generous refund policy. So all of their shop owners agree to honor a return and refund policy as long as the customer contacts them with, it, with uh, a complaint within three days of receiving the item. You must contact the shop owner within three days and they will contact you, they'll contact you in return if you are a shopper. All items must be shipped back within three days of the shop owner's acknowledgement and shipped according to the instructions laid out in the in the return policy. What we love is that Rubylane has a customer service contact info, so every shop featured on Rubylane.com will have its own contact information in addition to the Rubylane general customer info. So customers can use this information, the shop information, when contacting a shop with questions, concerns, or complaints, or about a potential refund. In terms of reputation, Based on our research and based on online reviews, we can say that Ruby Lane has a positive, has an overall positive uh, reputation. And uh, so they have, as a matter of fact, they have been given awards for their customer service over the years. And when you want to think about competitors and alter alternatives, there are other online marketplaces that provide access to unique or specialty as well as vintage or antique items like Etsy, Store Envy. Amazon handmade and so on and so forth so the first step you need to do here is to join so you can see on the screen here you got to go to Ruby Lane and uh, you go to the, the you will see on the home page you would see that uh, join Ruby Lane click on that and then you have a uh, vendor agreement so here they tell you what you can sell on the platform it's very important it's very important for you to read it and see what category your item falls into and then read more info about it from antiques and collectibles to dolls to art to furniture, lighting and rugs, glass, jewelry, porcelain and pottery, silver, fashion. So you put your business a full name, you put your personal first name and last name, your email address, your phone, your address, your zip, your city, your state, your country of origin. You also have to put your payment info. So the, the thing is, they're not going to charge your credit card. So they're using the credit card solely to help validate your accounts. Okay. Next, you have to put your billing address. If, if your billing address is the same as the above, that's fine. You put the password and you have to uh, accept their terms and conditions. I know nobody reads that, but you want to read it. It's very important, especially if you are new to Ruby Lane. That way you understand completely their terms and conditions and click submit. 
and so you would see and then once you submit it will uh, lead you the system will lead you to your home page to your dashboard and you can see here that there are there is a constellation of tasks that you need to complete right to your right you see a uh, shop overview shop accepted payment methods shipping policy and so on and so forth so you want to complete the tasks let's do let's go through it so shop overview here you can see here that you need to put uh, your shop logo image you do that you want to add picture make sure nobody has uh, nobody has has uh, your shop name already next you want to put your shop tagline right you want to put a very nice intro promo message that is that is there is uh, captivating and you want to talk about yourself and your shop one thing we have found is that there is an excellent article from Ruby Lane when it comes to uh, shop descriptions and the title is writing descriptions that sell great article you want to check it out next you want to uh, put your contact name your shop email address your address and you can see uh, you can show the address as actual address okay next you want to complete other stuff about yourself your city zip state country your phone number next you want to talk about uh, whether you want to be notified by, by cell phone or not and you can say your uh, options for notifications you put uh, your Facebook URL page this is uh, your Facebook page URL rather this is optional you can put your Skype name and here make sure that you put the methods of payment that you accept and uh, so you want to grant if you choose PayPal for example you want to grant Ruby permission to access your PayPal business account next you want to check other online payment method and the traditional offline methods of payments MasterCard Visa American Express cash Y bank wire and if you can put the restocking fee a service pledge those are optional if you offer layaway plans you want to mention that and uh, if there are other information in terms of a sales tax and uh, dealer discounts dealer to dealer discounts also those are optional and then you put uh, your you just complete your shipping and sales tax information next uh, you want to put uh, the currency the uh, advanced image processing all those things you can come back to them later on but uh, you have to fill uh, whatever you feel like is right right now and that's it just click update and that's it Now let's talk about managing your shop one thing is very important you can add items to your shop maximum 15 items and you can see here that uh, so you upload a we have uploaded 15 items so you put the item ID it this is generated uh, automatically from uh, Ruby Lane you have to put the title the category you want to you want to uh, put additional qualifiers right the more info you put into the system the better filters the item type the color and here next you want to put the style age theme room all those things are optional but again it's all about the amount of information you have about the item that you are you are selling so these are optional uh, elements but we strongly recommend you provide as much info as possible not just for the client or Ruby Lane's algorithm but most importantly for Google shopping we'll talk about that later but this is very important next you talk about the the description of the item and if there are other non searchable info you put that the quantity uh, available if there is no unique identifier for this item just check that box on the GTTIN and uh, here you want to put uh, some descriptions again for the item itself right so I was referring to that article before not only for your shop but also the article about writing descriptions that sell you want to use this article not, not just for your store for your shop but also for every item you put on the on the marketplace and here you want to talk about the condition of the item whether it's new used, or refurbished this is important again this is not just for Ruby Lane's algorithm but also for Google shopping you put the price the original price and cost all those are optional you can check to show make offer for this items okay so you want to check to show make offer make an offer okay next you want to you can say make an offer 
at 10% discount or less, or you can decline offers at 25% discount or more. So those are parameters you want to specify from the get-go. And in terms of domestic shipping, in terms of international shipping, you can choose not to ship internationally. You want to put information about the weight of the package, regular package, you put the length, the width, and the height. Next, you want to talk about insurance, whether you want to choose a domestic insurance or international insurance, and whether insurance is included. You can put that. Next, you want to actually put uh, the item in your shop if you want to. You can show the price as regular price. You can also uh, specify other important elements. So once you do this, you want to click Add Item. And what will happen here is that here you have a confirmation. So RubyLin will tell you that the item was added. It will give you the item ID and that's it. The third thing you want to do, and this is very quintessential, you want to optimize for Google Shopping. You want to optimize your listings descriptions for Google Shopping. One thing you need to understand, Google Shopping is now a paid auction format. So this change has promoted many questions from uh, RubyLane shop owners, which, uh, I mean, those are valid questions. So I'm going to show you the platform, the Google, shop, uh, Google Shopping platform. And paid auction definitely means that Google Shopping is allowing websites to submit feeds of, of uh, shop items for display in Google Shopping for free. But going forward, websites might set a budget and bid against other product vendors for inclusion in Google Shopping search return. So how much a vendor has allocated in their budget for items to be listed and how this compares with other vendors bidding for the same slot determine if, when, and how many items will show up in a search return for a given keyword or keyword phrases okay and uh, so the vendor paying the most for items fitting a specific criterion will have the most items listed followed by the next highest bidder etc and uh, if a, even if a vendor wins a bid not all of the items the vendor submitted that meet the criteria for placement for a specific keyword or keywords set are displayed in a search return for these items. How does that concern you? Why do you, should you care? It's important because Google Shopping can reject items submitted in the daily feed, especially if the items are not properly listed or properly indicated. Remember that every day RubyLane will submit all items listed on their platform to Google Shopping Okay, so the primary reason an item may be rejected are items attributes, relevant data and descriptions, shipping information and titles and, descri and descriptions, symbols, spaces and punctuation, preset domestic and international shipping, listing duplicate items on multiple sites is also not viewed favorably by Google or Google Shopping. This is very important, okay? It's kind of important to look at Google Shopping as a complete marketing program. So while RubyLane is currently publishing on a limited basis in Google Shopping, they are reminding shops that this is the only one spoke in the wheel of a complete marketing program that they manage on an ongoing basis. So it's important to understand. And I'm showing you right now on the screen a perfect example of an item description optimized for Google Shopping. This is beautiful uh, listed, beautiful described. Look at that. Wonderful. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another section of the Awesome Sort of Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation about how to sell on Ruby Lane like a pro. Number four, step number four, you want to price properly. So the most important factor to consider when purchasing an antique or collectible for resale is what someone is willing to pay for the item, right? This is very important. This is your list price. So before putting the hard earned cash in a dealer's hand for an item you plan to resell in your shop, you really want to take a moment to ascertain the true value of the item. In other words, you want to buy well. Folks, very important. Things like you, you, you just need to know your market. You want to study online and printed price guides. You want to check what a similar item sold for at auction. And you want to comparison shop online at 
and uh, and six stores and malls, right? Because is the item a highly sought after item or is the item trending in the current market? Also, keep in mind that now all not all buyers are collectors. If relevant, how will your selling price compare with the price of a similar antique or vintage reproduction or a new item? Those are questions I want you to start thinking right, thinking about right now. You want to determine the difference in value between a mass-produced and easy-to-find item with owning a one-of-a-kind or hard-to-find item. So in order for in order to price your item for resale, you must first determine the true cost of the item. The true cost. So the item cost is not only the, the amount you paid for the item. It also includes a plethora of uh, cost. There are some monetary factors you need to th take into account. For example, beside the, beside the purchase price, you have the listing fee. How much will it cost you to list an item in your shop? Maintenance fees. Consider how much it will cost you to maintain an item in your shop. You want to estimate how long you can maintain an item without going into the red. Either add the amount of maintenance each month to the cost for a simple for a single item, or determine a percentage to charge per item listed. Then you have the overhead expenses, right? I mean, you want to determine all overhead expenses to run your shop, which are not included, not always included in um, in the, the literature on the Ruby Lane literature. Because what you want to do is, I'm talking here about costs to dedicate real estate to house your inventory. What marketing expenses you will incur on a monthly basis, such as paid online advertising or ads and print publications, and how much you will pay for a featuring and clicks, plus the amount you spend on business cards. Those are important. I'm speaking about also shipping materials and other supplies. And don't forget to pay yourself for the amount of time you spend hunting for treasures, keeping records, writing descriptions, listing items, and taking photos. Yeah. And then you want to, once you have that, once you have all that cost, then you deduct it for the listing price and that's your profit. The next thing you need to do is to promote your shop. So when we talk about promoting, promoting your shop on Ruby Lane, you have a, a constellation of actions you can take to, uh, get ahead first you want to get social this is very important folks you want to market your items on social media sites such as a pinterest facebook twitter youtube and instagram remember that personal account pages for facebook are meant to be used for personal posts and not for advertising your products the logo for your personal page should be a picture or something you find interesting or uh, or it can be uh, something that you find uh, personal also Set up your Facebook business page via your personal page. One thing that's very important is you want to use your social media sites to showcase the items you sell in your shop. Notify your followers or business related events and special sales and be sure to include pins or posts to interesting content related to the items you sell, historical information and fun items. Okay, because at the end of the day, folks, I want you to remember this. Keep this in mind. You do not want to overwhelm your followers with a continuous stream of products you sell. Otherwise, they just will unfriend you. They will just unsubscribe. So besides getting social, you want to build a community. You can start a group of Facebook or other social sites where like-minded individuals can congregate, share, and provide feedback. You can, you can also try blogging. Okay, Use your business blog to share your expertise and present your items. Present yourself as an expert on the types of items you sell. Use photos, videos, audio, podcasts, how-to guides, you name it, instructional presentations and surveys. Because search engines give preference to blogs and websites, right? Your shop, that is. Blogs that regularly update their content. Newsletter campaigns. This could, this could be a good, uh, a great conduit also. You can promote your items through email newsletter campaigns. You can send out a brief monthly news newsletter to your customer list, your friends and family. Include several photos of recent additions to your inventory along with a short description. You can promote an upcoming sale such as the Ruby Red Tag Sale, for example. Make your newsletter very interesting. You can also, you want to pay attention to customer service. Very important. This is the fulcrum of your strategy, the foundation of your Ruby Lane strategy. 
you also might try banner and print advertising this could be the wonderful also so you can choose your advertising vehicle carefully be sure the publication or website targets the uh, demographic and collecting group you want to attract to your shop remember blogs social media and newsletter campaigns can most often be seen as uh, effective and less costly than banner and print publications you can also produce a video or a webinar right and host it on uh, youtube for example you can even use RubyLane marketing tools. So they have uh, they offer customizable flyers, shipping and return address labels, as well as postcards, t-shirts, USPS postage stamps, and other promotional items complete with the RubyLane logo at uh, their Zazzle store. You can also add uh, items to RubyLane's monthly finds shop promo that goes out to over 80,000 subscribers. That's wonderful. So for the details, you go to uh, there. You can go to rubylane.com info shop info, and oh, they also have an FAQ. Next thing you want to do, you want to handle orders. So, how do you manage orders in your shop? You can see on the screen here. So you want to click manage transactions in the drop down menu or from shop owners home. And next, you can click open purchase orders, offers, or questions. Next, you want to add tracking or other information to the order history for your buyer to see, right? Remember that once you do this, tracking info will be emailed to the buyer after edit. Take care of the payment method, and you can also contact the buyer if you want to. If needed, you want to add a shipping, insurance, or sales tax, then you want to click change. And then you want to finalize the uh, order after you have shipped the item and you're sure it will not be returned. And in terms of final finalizing your purchase order, you want to add tracking information if available. And you can select where you sold the item via Ruby Lane or not via Ruby Lane. This is important for tracking purposes. And if you did not sell the item, choose the reason why and add a comment if necessary because. It helps you monitor your store's evolution. But remember though, that comments can be seen by your customer. You wanna select what to do with the item. And you wanna click updates to finalize the order. And here, we wanna talk quickly about search clicks. So search clicks gives the shop owner, in this case you, the, op the option to pay to have his or her display higher inside wide searches on Ruby Lane. Okay, this is just the in internal marketing on uh, Ruby Lane. And search clicks is not paid on searches done within your shop. Search clicks is not paid on searches done with outside search engines. So you wanna start at search clicks on shop owner's home. And you wanna click one of the, uh, one of the menu options to explore search clicks for your shop, okay? You wanna compare the rates, for example. And based on our analysis, we recommend that small click rate changes such as a few pennies at a time so that you don't exceed your monthly budget in one day. You can update your monthly budget. And you want to click rank. Uh, so click rank shows this shop has a 38 click rate and a 36 other shops land higher in search result. This is how you actually compare where you, where you stand at, what your shop stands at. And here, basically, the click report shows the number of clicks on items sent to your shop from Ruby Lane search pages during the specific, uh, the specific time period. And this is great for analysis. This is great for adjustment. This is great for reporting. Step number seven, folks. And this is the last one. Last but not the least, you want to provide excellent customer service. I've already spoken about that, but this is important because at the end of the day, excellent customer service is the most affordable marketing tool. Think about word of mouth. Think about repeat customer. Think about loyal customer, right? And so how can you do this? There are several ways you can do this. You, can, you need to offer a prompt response to all inquiries. You want to take the lion's shares, the lion's share of responsibility for return issues. So it's part of doing business. Okay. So you want to err on the side of the customer. It's important because if you're doing this, it doesn't mean that you're just making the, you're just following the wrong strategy. No, 
this does not mean accepting abuses. If someone is a repeat return customer without any reason, you don't have to continue to do business with them. Point blank. You may want to use the block buyer feature in, in such a case. You want to stand behind your products, right? Be proud of your product. You want to respect your business and what you sell, and your customer will do so as well. You want to be sure to fully describe your items, including all flows, no matter how small, and dates whenever possible. Very important. Be straightforward with the truth. You want to do the legwork. This is where good service really pays off. Take care of the little details for the customer. So once the customer knows you have everything under control, they will really appreciate it. You want to offer an add-on to the cost. You want to add-on and you want to offer an add-on that the customer did not expect, right? This is a positive surprise. A thank you. You can send a thank you note or a follow-up email to be sure that they received everything in good order. Or once they've made a purchase, send an order acknowledgement outlining all the details of the item's arrival. These are things you don't have to do, but they make all the difference. So once you do all this, how do you get paid? So there are several ways you can get paid, okay? And uh, you, you have to negotiate payment and shipping of the item with the buyer using RubyLane's transa transaction management tools because RubyLane is not involved in the transaction. You want to indicate which form of payment you are able and prepared to accept by checking the boxes on your shop info page. So when a buyer submits a purchase order for one of your items, they also select one of your accepted methods of payments. This will appear on the purchase order as the payment method. Okay, this is important. And what, what I want to say here is that um, basically if you have a, a PayPal business account, you should indicate that you accept PayPal. Your customers can then pay via credit card using PayPal without registering at, at PayPal. Okay, and uh, I'm actually showing you on the screen here that uh, the cost of, uh, I'm showing you the cost of Ruby Lane Shop. And this is effective as of August 1st, 2021. They updated the fees all the time. So you can see that there's no set of fee, no listing fee. In terms of maintenance, this is this will cost you $25 per month, including unlimited items. And next you can see that if you don't have a maintenance fee, so you need to add at least 15 items during the month to receive a rebate of $25. And the service fee is about 10%. So 9.9% .9 based on the purchase order totals does not include the sales tax. And this is capped at $250. All right, folks, this is it for today's conversation. I was explaining to you how to sell on Ruby Lane like a pro. First, you need to join, then learn how to manage your shop, how to optimize for Google Shopping, how to price properly, how to promote your shop, how to handle orders, how to provide excellent service. Thank you so much for your attention. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous.